The sunrise beckons, an early morning wake-up call over Boston Harbor, but inside one central wharf, life is already dancing in a captivating choreography of sea life. The mission of the New England Aquarium is to sustain ocean animals and their habitats. I want people to feel as passionately about that as we do. CEO Vicki Spruill says that mission has held true since the New England Aquarium first opened its doors in the summer of 1969. They would soon fill a 200,000 gallon tank with 52 windows offering a circular view. The architect did this design intentionally so that small groups of people, families, could have personal interactions in each window. For more than 50 years now, the New England Aquarium has been honoring ocean life, bringing the animals here for all of us to enjoy, more importantly, learn from. This giant tank here, when it was built, was a marvel to behold. And I guess you could say the same thing today. A mesmerizing view into a unique world of education. Our job here is to sort of bring a coral reef to Boston. Mike O'Neill is supervisor of the Giant Ocean Tank, or GOT. The Giant Ocean Tank is our largest exhibit. It's a Caribbean coral reef ecosystem. It has about a thousand animals in it. My job is to take care of anything they need, basically. A myrtle, our big green sea turtle, a couple loggerhead sea turtles, and our sharks and our stingrays. So. The needs can vary based on the creature. He knows the 1,000 animals that live in its depths better than most. His job is to ensure they thrive. The cornerstone of that may surprise you, a six-story filtration system. The filtration system is going to turn over the entire volume of water roughly every 90 minutes, and that's really what's going to keep the chemistry of the water ideal for the animals. That's 200,000 gallons in the time it might take to grab lunch with a friend. Speaking of lunch, as the aquarists prepare to take a deep dive, shrimp buckets done, scatter. Volunteers prepare the 35 pounds of food per day it takes to sustain the GOT. We have two main types of feeding, and it's the scatter feeding and then target feeding. 1,500 volunteers from chopping to cleaning help the aquarium and its animals flourish. It's a labor of love. To help maintain a seamless synergy among species, the aquarium adheres to a strict feeding schedule. We do keep predators and prey in this exhibit together. Most of any of the needs of the predators are going to be met by what we are offering them. But how do you know who ate and who didn't? Some of the fish are targeted using these boxes. Others are trained. We don't recommend trying it at home, but yes, you can train a fish. Our big puffer fish, he knows that when the diver gets in the water with this big white ring, that that's where he needs to go in order to have his lunch. Weighing in at a spelled 515 pounds, the matriarch of the tank and perhaps the building, Myrtle the Turtle. She's probably 70 years old and more closely towards like the 90 year range. Seen by more than 1 million visitors, she is an avid explorer of the world around her. Most activities that go on in the exhibit, she wants to get a closer look at. You get to feed penguins for a living. I do, yeah, so. <laughs> what is that like? <laughs> uh, it can be a little hectic at times. Brendan Dugan, penguin aquarist, might have one of the coolest jobs around. The water helps. That's brought in from chilly Boston Harbor. Two species of penguins live at the aquarium. African penguins, known for their loud call. And the rock hoppers, with their rock hopping feather dews. Each have different educational names. Treasure is named after the treasure oil spill that happened in 2000, where about 20,000 birds were affected. Dugan recognizes all of them, keeps track of their diets, uses feeding time as an optimal space to monitor their health. We do feed them five different types of fish throughout the week, make sure that we're not taking too much from one fish source. Today is sardine day, so it's not not all their favorites. No, it's not, but bring on the capelin. Head first if you want to dip, dip it, it in, in the water. water. Yep. Right here? Just watch your hands. Woo! Introducing visitors to one of the aquarium's newest additions, Tatouche. Guest relations specialist Patrick Beckles, an aquarium veteran, offering guidance here for more than 31 years. We always hope to provide an answer to our visitors' questions. There is no end to the stream of curiosity unleashed by an up-close look at creatures of the sea. 
As supervisor of visitor experience, Beckles and his team make sure no one leaves without an answer. They don't leave with a no. There's no such thing as a no here. From volunteers to full-time staff, there is a recognition of the special place they hold in sharing the story of these animals. People are inspired by what they learn about and then hopefully become good stewards and conservationists in terms of protecting ocean ecosystems. The aquarium is currently closed in compliance with the city of Boston's COVID-19 orders. When Nicole was there in the fall, the staff told her that many of the animals have favorites when it comes to mealtime. For example, Myrtle loves to eat lettuce, cabbage and Brussels sprouts. And spoiler alert, the coral reef is not real, although it certainly looks it. It's handmade and was painted by aquarium artists. Up next, caring for an electric eel, not so easy. They 